Here are our top three personal growth and development books that really need to be on your reading list. Yeah, today on the Wandering Not Lost podcast. And now your host, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome everyone to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where together we align, connect, and prosper. Looking forward to our conversation today, Jen. You know, I uh, I, I enjoy reading, but these personal development books aren't my jam. Now, I love so you know I, I get my my information. I know what we're talking about today, so it's not like I'm the uh, stranger in the room because I we've talked about a lot of this stuff before, and um, I'm more of a cliff note guy for the personal development. Plus, who needs to read a book? When you have Jan O'Brien that can spiritually guide you, that's the way I kind of look at that. And you have ChatGPT so to go give you your cliff notes. Yeah, there, is, there is there is that. Honestly, too. I'm telling you, that is a brilliant way to condense a book if you don't enjoy reading some of these things and just go get the key points from it. Because guess what? That's what we have in the show notes for you today. A that's really right. good summary with key takeaway. We're not going to talk about all these points today, but first, why don't we talk about the three books that we're recommending now? These three books are my personal favorite three books. I I have I have been reading personal development, and I'm a nonfiction book person. Matt's the you are. fiction person, so I I think literally I think you and your wife are the ones who got me reading some fiction books. But for as long as I can remember, I have preferred to listen to or read more business development as well as uh, a lot of personal development and metaphysical spiritual books. But these three had to go through the list. These three are definitely my top three and ones that I highly recommend in every coaching situation. They're on our reading list. And by the way, we do have a reading list. We will be adding anything that we come across to that. And we're looking for you, our valued listeners to submit your personal favorites when it comes to personal and or business development. So here's what they are. Without further ado, number one, The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. Number two, Think and Grow Rich, which really is probably the number one. But I made it number two because I think Four Agreements is so simple to to read or listen to. And we're going to dive into what those four agreements are. And I think that's life-changing stuff. But so is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. We're going to cover some of the concepts. There's 13 principles in that book. It's really a good read. It's one to go back to and read again many times, even if you've read it before. I believe Think and Grow Rich is probably one of the books published in, originally in 1937 that so many other authors are drawn for all the various self mindset things that have been published since. And number three, Loving What Is, Four Questions That Can Change Your Life by Byron Katie. This process and this book is so amazing to help you personally in your communication and, and getting to the bottom of things that may be holding you back. So I think these three are powerful for your mindset. And when you get your mindset right and you're really clear with getting rid of any fears or limiting beliefs, as we've talked about in some previous episodes, and you focus on that part, then success comes in your business. So that's why you we're know, starting out. You know, Jen O'Brien, the uh, uh, Brian Katie book, uh, or Byron Katie uh, book, uh, "Loving What Is the Four Questions That Can Change Your Life." Those those questions that you ask yourself. I mean, we talk about this, right? When you get you when you get stuck, and uh, you know, the, those questions are so powerful. I'm looking forward to getting to that when you get to it, because I was looking through when I was, I was putting the show notes together, I was really going through those going, holy crap, <laughs> you know, that though, exactly. just, just the, that, you know, just doing that on a daily basis is, would just be fantastic. So anyway, let's, I love it. let's dive so in. Let's yeah. dive in. We're going to cover, we're just going to spend a few minutes on each book, hitting the highlights and, and sharing the wisdom from these books. And then you can go and if you haven't, Go to our show notes and get the links. We have links to Amazon or I'm into Audible now. I really love, I really enjoy listening to books now and podcasts, of course. So The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz is really all about embracing four specific agreements and really living by these guiding principles that I'm going to break down now for your personal growth and your freedom, really. Okay, so it's based on some ancient Toltec wisdom, which is very cool. He's written some other books, but this is the first. 
And this is the best by far. So number one is be impeccable with your word. Just love this. Okay. Mm -hmm. This agreement really emphasizes how powerful our words are in the, in the importance of using them responsi responsibly. So not only the words that you're speaking to other people, but the words and the self-talk that you're for yourself. This is where I think it's very, very insightful, right? You can either, <coughs> I'm so sorry. <coughs> words are either going to build you up or build other people up or bring them down, right? And so the big takeaway here is use is integrity. Just speak with integrity and say only what you mean. So avoid using words to speak against you or yourself or to gossip. You know, you use the power of words to really come from a powerful space of truth and love, really. So I love be impeccable with your word and this piece on integrity. And I usually tell a story here real quick about, uh, for example, I integrity is a big issue for me. Okay, so integrity is one of my core personal values. And when I first was introduced to this book, I had a life coach who was helping me really embrace and understand this. And I would go in my coaching sessions and I would talk about how uh, someone that I was working with was bothering me because he doesn't have integrity. That was my feeling. And so he used this in here in the four agreements. And I'll, and I'll come back to this when we talk about the Byron Katie book, uh, the the turnaround because he helped me see that I was, this guy was showing up in my life as a mirror to help me understand that I wasn't being impeccable with words for my own self. Meaning I was saying to myself back then, and it's, you're going to laugh, Matt, because it's something I continue to struggle with. And I think I've really gotten to the place now of, I made a commitment to be an in integrity about taking care of myself, taking care of myself first and not everybody else which has been a lifelong thing, a lifelong journey of I'll do everything for everybody else, my family, you know, whoever is in my life, and then not get to me, meaning like take care of me physically and so on, mentally, spiritually, whatever. I've really been working on that. So he knew this and my coach basically helped me see that the guy showing up in my life that I felt was out of integrity because of things that he was doing at work that he said he was going to do and he didn't do. And he helped me see where I wasn't being impeccable with the word for myself. And it was very, very empowering. So words are powerful. Be impeccable with your words and just say the things that you want to be able to say. The next two, the middle two are super powerful and everyone, they're easy to understand. And I think everyone is really going to get that we all probably do this. So number two is don't take anything personally. Oh my goodness. Hmm. These two, and number three, just so I can say it is don't make assumptions. Let me break them down. But I think if you can master these two, you will avoid so much miscommunication and angst in your life. Yes. So don't take anything personally is the agreement that it's just rooted in recognizing that everybody has a unique worldview. This is a little NLP. Everyone has their own personal experiences, you know, so nothing anyone else is doing is because of you. What others say, what others say to you when you're in a relationship and somebody maybe is saying some things to you and you start to take it personally. The powerful thing here is to realize that you're a mirror. I just mentioned how this other guy was a mirror to me to show me something I needed to learn. So when you take things personally, you're creating a lot of stress in your life as opposed to when somebody is saying something, it's usually a reflection of something they need to be aware of. So if somebody is like hitting you with, well, you're not doing this or I'm not happy with what you're saying to me, or you're making me feel this way. Nobody can make you feel anyway. You can choose to take that on. And that's what that means. Taking things personally is stewing on things and, and allowing words or actions of someone else to impact you when really they're showing up in your life, maybe to learn some things or for them, maybe you're being a mirror to that person for them to help realize what is going on for them that they're upset about and they're projecting it out onto you. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. It creates needless suffering if you constantly take things in and you take it personally, okay? And that's all part of getting comfortable with who you are, standing in your own power, really understanding and knowing that you make the decisions every day on who you're going to be and so forth, okay? So don't make assumptions goes with this, right? 
assumptions leads to complete misunderstandings and miscommunications and really unnecessary drama, right? Making assumptions. <clears throat> what this says is if you embrace this agreement, you are committing to getting clear in all your communications. That's really how you can clear up even taking things personally and making assumptions is when you're having a communication and you run down the rabbit hole of somebody says something to you and it upsets you or you're in a personal relationship and some drama is going on and you believe you heard something or you took something a certain way and then you stew on it and then you don't actually have the confidence to just come and have a very good communication with that person to say, Matt, this is, you know, I don't, what we, that conversation we just had or that conversation we had the other day, this is what I heard, and I'm not sure if that was with the intention, but this is how it, it, it kind of made me feel, and I just wanted to talk it out with you. If you're willing to have the courage, I guess that's the word, to have a, a very honest conversation with people without attacking them, like you made me feel this way, but this is how I took it. Can we just talk this out because I don't know what I missed. A lot of times when you do that, the other person will be like, that is not what I said at all. Or this mm -hmm. is what we're, you know, and if you expect, you got to do this sooner because what we have a tendency to do as humans is take all this information in, stew on it for days, weeks, months, and all of that negative energy starts to build up into you and you're holding a grudge and it's starting to impact how you're feeling physically, mentally, emotionally. And then when you finally go clear the air or something happens that clears the air, you're like, what? I was, I made this crazy assumption because I heard this and I said, I assumed that he meant X, Y, and Z. And that wasn't the case at all. Right. Have you, haven't you experienced that throughout? I, I, hey, listen, you know what? I'm, I'm in a little thing called marriage. <laughs> <laughs> and these kind of things happen all the time. Right. You know, it's so funny. Laura and I are, are <laughs> we are simpatico, right? We agree. And, and we are on the same page in almost everything. This comes up a lot because we just sometimes are saying exactly the same thing in a, a very different way. And it's so weird when you get down to the end of it, you're like, well, what was all of that angst about? We were, it, we, we are, we agree and we're disagree is weird. <laughs> so if you're cognizant of this, this is huge. All of these are huge, obviously. Right. But if you, if you can stay away from this, you're going to be in a good place. You, you just hit the point about what happens when the, energy gets lifted up because we're uh, angry or we're upset. We're not clearly hearing and right. the issues that can come up with uh, just our ego. I want maybe being right or stubbornness, some things like that. So this is why when, when a confrontation happens and you're, you're elevated, your energy is elevated and you're not thinking clearly, it's probably better to just take some time, but you don't need to take it once. Yeah. separate for a minute, think it through. But when you really embrace this and when we get to the loving what is, that's the final icing on the cake as a tool to really help you understand where all this digs in, is that you can now come back and just by having asking questions and expressing what you heard or what you really want and, and just asking for some clarity, you can avoid days and weeks and months of drama and stress and sadness. Okay. Mm -hmm. So don't make assumptions. So again, we've talked about be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. Recognize that when you do that, it's something for you to learn if you're taking it personally, but it's really about the other person projecting something onto you and don't make assumptions, go get clear, get communication so that you can have freedom and happiness and not stress and, and worry and anxiety. And then always do your best as number four. Now I love one simply says that you are, you should just do your best for the moment that you're in, meaning your best today may not be your best tomorrow. You may not be feeling well. You may be having a naggy pain in the butt cough for two weeks that won't go away <laughs> and is dragging your energy down a little bit. And your best is your best today versus when you maybe have had all the sleep and you've got high energy and you're all that. Okay. So your best will change from moment to moment, you know, whether you're healthy versus uh, sick. And the whole point is do your best. And this is a tough one because people, if you're very driven and you think all the time about, you you know, like I'm not you know, firing on all cylinders or I'm not, I could have done better. That's that self-talk where we can, we can start being judgy 
to ourself and negative and that's just powerful so these are really all about the free that it really creates freedom and happiness and you know it's simple this is what i love about the four agreements yeah. i have carried around and i can't find the card now and i think we made them where i literally just put these four agreements on a card and put it in my wallet or, or put it in front of you and it's just a reminder that when you find yourself getting into situations this is a tool you can come back to and just go oh I'm taking that personally and I'm making some assumptions. Let me go clear the air and everything. Everybody's going to feel better. Right. And today is I'm doing the absolute best that I can. And then you're just always only when you say the words that are coming out of your mouth, make sure they're meaningful and that you mean to do them. And you're just coming with integrity when you do all that. So, uh, so, all right, I love it. So yeah, that really is and what, what is so key is that just t getting just that little bit of stress out of your life makes a world of difference. You know, and you just don't realize it till it's not there. Or you do right, realize it when it's not there all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's so important to get that, to alleviate the tensions in your life. Because Absolutely. you're putting up on yourself, for crying out loud. Yeah. So let's jump into the classic, everybody has heard of it. If you haven't ever really read it or listened to it, highly recommend going back to Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. As I mentioned, originally published in seven. If you're not familiar with Napoleon Hill's work, there's a whole great, we don't have time to talk about his backstory of who he was clerking or, or being an assistant to, but he was very driven to go find the secrets to success, really. Why, why were some people, so he focused on business people. Of course, they were mostly men. At, I think they were all men at that point. Yeah, in time. Probably. So he studied over 500 successful individuals over the course of writing, the, you know, getting the information to write this book. Many were millionaires to determine what were all the common traits and practices that led to their success. And what is so interesting, and it carries through to today, is there's 13 principles in here. I'm just going to cover the like the the top six, the first six, because there's a lot here and it gets into some really deep stuff. But it's really all about mindset. It's really all about mindset and goal setting and perseverance and things that we talk about all the time that are in every self help book that you've ever read most likely are pulling on principles because these principles are universal yeah. and, and they're powerful. There's two quotes that I love and I always use in places that come from this book. There's tons of Napoleon Hill quotes, but the first one is about burning desire. So I just want to read it. There's one quality which one must possess to win. That is definiteness of purpose the knowledge of what you want, what one wants, and a burning desire to possess it. Now, I told you this, I got it initially, and when we talk about it when we're doing goal setting and business planning, if you're writing down something that you want or focusing on something, if you do not have a complete burning desire, that's what we talk a lot about passion, that's burning desire. You have to want it so much. That was one of the key things that he found with these successful millionaires at the time, billionaires now, is they have a burning desire to achieve whatever it is they're going for. And that is the, the, the very basis of it. And then the next one is the key, the next key. So whatever the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. So this really gets to the heart of how you manifest is some of the principles we're going to talk about right now, but it really has to be you through a bunch of tools that you can use, getting your subconscious mind to realize that you can achieve anything as long as you believe it. And you have that burning desire, burning desire and passion. Okay, so I love it. So this is a primer on, on how, how to be successful, but you'll see that it's not that you just go out and write a business plan to go start some business. If you don't have these underlying issues going on, this is why we are all about align, connect, prosper. If you haven't done the work to figure out what gets in your way, what are you afraid of? What are your limiting beliefs? What's stopping you from achieving the thing that you say you want? It's always something internal, always something that you have to work through. So you can't skip that hard part. You can't <laughs> skip. <laughs> Sorry. You can't skip the part on working on yourself. You can't just say, oh, I used to have this belief that such and such, and now I don't have that belief anymore. 
you really have to kind of go address that or otherwise it'll creep back in and you'll get these roadblocks, okay? So let's just hit the, the first uh, six is what I want to really just talk on. Desire is the first principle. The starting point of all achievement. That quote I just mentioned, right? All success starts with a burning desire. He, he, he'll he emphasize this, uh, the importance of defining clear, you ready for this one? Clear and specific goals and transforming that desire into a constant burning pursuit. Now, we talk about that all the time with the daily, do the daily, having, writing your affirmations, stating your goals as affirmations and constant, but you have to tie your feelings. This is where the burning desire and the mind has to conceive and believe it. You have to program your brain that this is what you really are doing. And then you have to feel it. You have to want it enough. This burning desire really ties to emotions. Okay. So desire, the first step. Number two is faith. Faith is the visualization and belief in the attainment of that desire, of that thing that you want in number one, okay? So it's a positive mental attitude. It's essential for achieving success. It's the, the it's really the power of goals through self. He uses the word self-suggestion and auto-suggestion, which is number three. To me, that's affirmations, okay? Yeah. So the way that you influence the subconscious mind is through auto-suggestion which is affirmations, really stating them and believing them and doing that all the time, right? So it's, it's all about uh, being reinforcing that on a daily basis, okay? So desire, faith, auto-suggestion, the first three. Now, four, specialized knowledge. This is not, uh, knowledge is not power until it's organized and directed through your action plans. Love that. Specialized knowledge is required and it can be acquired through education, experience, and mentorship. Getting outside help, getting coaching, right. getting, you know, this is what he did. He learned by learning from all these successful people. Number five, powerful. Imagination, he calls it the workshop of the mind. It's cool. When you read about anybody from Albert Einstein to Edison, you know, they, they all touched, tied into this. They tied into that imagination, that higher self through, you know, you'll hear anecdotally, you'll hear things like uh, taking little cat naps. What do you guys call them? Genius uh, naps. Genius naps. Uh, who was it? <laughs> it was um, Edison, actually, that, that took the genius naps and was really known for that. He, he, would, he, he never slept for long periods of time. It was 20 minute cat naps throughout the 24 hour period where he just have a cot in his laboratory and he'd lay down for 10, 15, 20 minutes and get up and feel refreshed. That was just the way it worked for him. And actually, you know what? Those genius naps absolutely work. And Laura and I, we often will take it, as we call it, take a genius. No, I said that. And I honestly feel what those folks were doing and what all creative genius people, anybody is doing is when you understand the power of the mind, and you do it through meditation. You could do it through setting intentions when you go to sleep at night and solving a problem. They're tapping into this higher consciousness piece. That's what's happening. It's not that that, per that person, uh, Edison or Einstein or whoever, is really just connecting with where all the information is, wherever you, whatever your belief is on that. That's what this is. It's tapping into that and getting out of your conscious mind and tying into the subconscious and the higher level of where all this information can, the inspiration that comes from somewhere, that's what's happening here. And you've got to embrace this to create what it is that you're wanting to do. Okay. So imagination, the workshop of the mind. And the last one I want to cover just for this book is organized planning. This is the turning the desire, getting everything to fire, the affirmations, the, the creative mind piece and, taking action. So you set intentions, you have a burning desire, you're clear about your specialized knowledge, and then you must, must, must take some action. So effective plans are crucial to get your desire to become reality. You can't just, you know, wish for it and sit around and hope it happens. This is what I don't, I say it all the time, this is what I do not like about The Secret. If you ever it's the secret movie. The secret, the book was okay, but that movie tried to be very mainstream when it came out and it, it had the genie and everything in it. And it was like, 
all you have to do is, you know, think a thought and it becomes reality. That is not true. You have to do the things that are in here. Uh, you have to really want it. You have to have a burning desire. You have to be super clear about it. You've got to do that auto suggestion as Hill calls it. I call it meditation, affirmations. You have to tap into that power. Then you have to take action. You got to get up every day and do something. And it can just be little tiny steps mm -hmm. moving toward what it is you want. And then everything, the universe lines everything all up and everything starts to work. And that's what planning is about, right? And he, he, they all build on each other. So that's number six. There's a total of 13. This organized planning now moves into the leveraging the power of knowledge and expertise in masterminds, meaning like being around other people and using the power of mastermind to either to get more creative and have really cool things happen to you, right? And the others go on to do more things like persistence and, and, and various other things. So that we just want to stop on that one. It's, it's awesome, good core stuff. And it, you know, if it, if it will help you realize that all you have to do is just follow some simple steps and you know, just to, to reiterate, it is literally have a burning desire. You have to really feel it and want it. And then you just walk through these steps where you get clear, you turn, you, you turn that into goals and affirmations, you work on that. You have to constantly be putting yourself in that powerful space use some of the things that are in here, like the imagination, the workshop of the mind. I love that. And then take action. Go, go pick up any book, any business book, That's any right. other book on, on manifestation. You're going to see similar principles. Okay. So love that one. Think and grow rich. Go back to that. If you haven't, it's a good refresh. If you've never read it or listened to it, maybe you get something from it. All right. So let's bring it back to number three, which really is more of a powerful tool very much like the, it takes the four agreement idea. Mm -hmm. This actually is an exercise that you can do that can really help you when you find yourself having stress and challenges in your relationships. So loving what is four questions that can change your life, Byron Kate. So this book is a method that she termed self inquiry. All right. And she also calls it the work. So if you want to see her in action, just Google her or go to YouTube and put Byron Katie the work and watch her do these four questions in the turnaround. I'm going to walk us through those, but watch her in action. It's so powerful. I was so impressed with this. This was one of the books when I went through a coaching thing years ago. I uh, was introduced to this work and we went to see her. So I was in a coaching program where we were learning to be better coaches and we all drove to California and we watched Byron Katie do a talk and take people up onto the stage and do this inquiry. So you'll find when you go see her on YouTube, there'll be categories. Like you'll probably find whatever is going on for you, like in a relationship or you feel that something's happening and you're, you know, you, your husband is your husband or spouse or something is doing this and it, you can, you're trying to figure out how to get that worked out. You'll probably find a video because everybody has similar issues. Okay. Yep. Whatever the common things are there, she's done one on it. Okay. So here are the four questions. Okay. Is it true? Or right, so let me jump back up. Her whole thing is that stress in our lives and challenges that come up that really create stress and, and anxiety and drama. A lot of it has to do with having uh, thoughts that you have in question. So stress is caused not by the world around us, but, but our thoughts about yep. the world. So yep. by changing your thoughts, you can fundamentally change your experience. So it's about empowering and not allowing things to happen to you because you feel that that person, that situation, what's happening in the world is creating your stress. What's creating the stress is that you have in question some of the thoughts that you're having. So this is a tool, a resource, a very powerful, you can actually download the worksheet uh, to help you guide you through how to do this technique and watch her do it. And then you'll understand even better than that. I can explain here in a few minutes. So, so the four questions are, is it true? This question challenges you to examine whether or not a thought you're having is true. So let me try to do an example so that we can walk through these four questions. I'm going to go back to my example of that he used on me, my coach used on me, where I was coming up with the, I was really kind of coming in and holding on to this energy of about this manager who was my uh, 
supervisor was really bothering me. So I was saying things like, I'll just call him Jack. Jack is real. I'm really annoyed with Jack. He gets away with so much. He, he says he's going to do these things and he never does them. Okay. Those are the things that you'll say when you're having frustration over a person or a situation or whatever. It could even be like about the world. I, I'm so frustrated by our politicians and this is what's going on. Like if you're having thoughts that are constantly in your mind, not just a fleeting thought, but something that you keep bringing up, this is what you use. You can use these four questions in the turnaround. So I'll stick with my situation of Jack is <coughs> so annoying. I can't believe he's in the position. I work so hard. He gets away with, I do all the work. He gets away with everything. He never does anything he says he's going to do. That's the right. setup. So the coach goes to me, is that true? And initially what you'll do is you'll go, yeah, because I'm experiencing that's what he's doing. And then as you dig deeper into this question, what you find is you, when you do the work and you, and you get a little bit deeper into her technique or read the book or go to her website, this question is all about how can you know what the truth is for someone else? Yeah. Okay. So is it true? The follow-up question is, so the person, when you're doing this in coaching, you'll, you'll go, you'll still hold on to, it's true. That person is bothering me because he is not in integrity. He ought to be. And that's really what it is. It's like your, your issue that you hold on to is so-and-so is making me feel blank in certain negative feeling because of what he's doing and he should do X. That's the, if you have a thought going in your head and it lingers on for days or weeks, you need to address that. That's what this work is all about. You haven't questioned your thought and you're allowing it to continue to, you know, mess up your world really. Second question, can you absolutely know that it's true? This prompts a deeper reflection into your own beliefs. And so you get in there and, and the coach and the per person that's qualified to do all this training because she does workshops on it, helps the person to really see, and you can do it to yourself, helps to really see how can you absolutely know it's true? Do you know what's going on in that person's world? Mm -hmm. You know, you're reacting to it, but what's happening for them? I mean, you don't know what they're going through. You're reacting to something that's happening that's bothering you. So number three says, how do you react? What happens when you believe, this is all it's saying. What happens when you believe the thought, Jack, I'm having the thought that Jack is really stressing, not stressing the word we I'm upset with Jack because he doesn't do what he says he's going to do. And he ought to stay in integrity. That's the thought. And the power of this work, by the way, is to write the thought down. Like write down the thought you're constantly having and write it down so that you can be clear about it as you walk through these three steps. So how do you react when you have that thought? Because clearly you're having that thought a lot. And then you, you, will, you will reflect and you'll go, well, I feel anxious, I get upset, and you'll start listing all these emotions. And so the next inquiry in here is, how would you feel if you didn't have that thought anymore? And this is the powerful part, because if somebody's really tied into this, that person is making me angry because of their actions and they should act differently. If you are really in that, it's hard to let go of this until you really do this work. How would you feel? I'm not asking you, to release that belief right now. I'm just asking you, how would it be for you? So the first part was, how do you feel when you have the thought? And you restate the question. And it's always, I'm upset. It gets me riled up again. It's just wrong, blah, blah, blah. You're just spitting all this negative stuff up. Great. How would it feel if you didn't have that thought anymore? How would it make you feel if you didn't have that thought anymore? Mm -hmm. Just the thought. And then you go, wow, I would feel free. I'd feel happy. Okay, great. That's the key, right? So number four, that's, uh, that's number three. How do you react? Um, number three was how do you react when you have that thought? How does it make you feel? And then number four is who would you be without the thought? This helps you imagine the possibility of living without the stressful thought, okay? So how do you react when what happens when you believe the thought? You question it and you just look at it. And then who would you be without the thought? Those are the four questions, right? And so good absolute key to this thing is the turnaround okay so you you have you can't skip through that you have to really dig in write it down dig into what is going on what is it making you feel 
And then who would you be without that thought if you could just let that thought go? The turnaround involves taking the original thought and turning it around to the self, 180 degrees to the other person uh, to help explore all these different angles to uncover the hidden truth. So what happens here is, I'll go back to my thought, Jack makes me angry because he doesn't do what he says he's going to, he's, he doesn't do what he says he's going to do. I'll keep it that simple. So the turnaround could be the opposite of that. Jack doesn't make me angry because he doesn't do the things that he says yeah. that he's going to do. Or you could try that on and go, why do I need to feel angry about that? Right. Um, you know, yep. so then you dig deeper, but the one that usually in, the, in my particular circumstance, I'm actually telling you about an aha that I had years ago, a real world thing it was so powerful. He was introducing me to these concepts and all the, the, this book and the four agreements and other things. And so we were like in our third session. So let me do the setup here. So we're, we're doing the turnaround. He's doing these four questions in the turnaround. He has me do the, you know, Jack, I'm not angry, you know, at Jack because he doesn't ever do what he's going to do. And you know, he's digging deeper into how do you know what's going on for Jack? And is it your job to be in Jack's world? Isn't it your job to be in your world and how you react to things? Then the, the big turnaround is I'm angry with myself because I don't do what I say I'm going to do. Okay. So he had me do the turnaround and I said that and I immediately went, that's not true. I always do what I say I'm going to do. And he and he goes into his notes and he goes back three sessions and he says, is this something that you said about three sessions ago? Which was how I was really upset with myself about not taking care of myself. Like I don't understand what's going on with that. And, and I, I had this big aha. So to recap, what happened there is Jack is showing up in my life to let me question some challenges that I'm having where I'm not in integrity. I think I'm all about integrity. But apparently I'm not integrity when it comes to myself. And I was like, holy mackerel, this is so true. I do everything I say I'm going to do for work, for other people in my life, but I am not staying in integrity with me. And I would, and so the way he came back to it, my coach Tim goes, so thank you, Jack, for showing up in my life to help me understand that. This is what is so powerful about this because we just, you just see that, you're allowing stress to happen because you're not questioning thoughts that you're having and really getting to the bottom of what, what's causing that and how can you be free from it? So powerful. I love that uh, work. I use it all the time when I'm having a challenge or something that I'm holding on to. If it takes longer than a day to get over something, I will come use this and go, where in my life am I having a challenge with whatever I'm upset about? And it's just very freeing. So there it is, folks. Three amazing books to get you going on a personal development area if you haven't looked at them before. There's so many others, but these are just personal favorites of mine that have been honestly life-changing and game-changing for me. Yeah, I love that. That last those last questions I think are so important. Then you know, it doesn't have to be about somebody else. You can you can have that conversation about your own thoughts, right? And this is what I do. I mean, I I I don't have as many uh, issues with others as I have with myself. You know, so you go in and ask yourself those questions. It can be really really powerful. Kind of when you were talking, it kind of reminds me of the story. Laura and I were watching the Masters over the weekend because um, mm. uh, we just love it's fun. To, I, I think as you get older, golf really is fun to watch. <laughs> what the hell? I watched it. Anyway, it's so funny <laughs> to watch it. And it reminds me of a story about my father-in-law. My mom, my, my, uh, both of our parents love golf. And um, in the later years, my father-in-law, we would go up and visit, say, you know, visit him on the weekends, and we would watch golf all the time. And uh, we were watching, I forgot, I don't know what we were watching, but there is a particular player, and I won't go into who that was, but the 94-year-old father-in-law is sitting there, and he always, always, always would complain about this one guy. And he's, he finally just said, he's a jerk. And we just kind of looked at him and kind of laughed a little bit. And then I swear, five minutes later, he's like, you know, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I don't know him. And they, I mean, he was kind of good. I mean, 
clearly he he wasn't going through these steps, but he was in a way going through these steps because he questions he questioned himself. It's like, well, what, <laughs> right? Um, I don't know if he actually did the turnaround at at some point, but I can tell you, he never one time ever had an issue with that player ever again. Wow. Playing golf. So it was really kind of interesting. So we laugh about that all the time. He's a jerk. I don't know why I said that. So. See, that's questioning your thought. Exactly. And, and At 94. He's a 94 year old man. Right. So very, very cool. So all of this personal development stuff talks about when you really find whatever tool or resource or technique that works for you is becoming aware and aware. And, the, and one of the things my coach used to say to me was, would you rather be right or would you rather be free? Yeah. So, so many people get caught up in wanting to be right about something or holding on to their argument or getting that other person to see their point of view versus just being free and, and having peace. What do you want? Do you want the angst and the stress? Are you tired of that? Or do you want to find tools that are going to help you realize that a lot of that relationships are mirrors? A lot of things. I really believe that relationships are mirrors where both people can learn to come together share things equally or have great experiences, but also to learn things and grow. That's where the conflict can come up as an opportunity to learn and grow. And we just gave you some great tools to help from the four agreements to understanding the basics of think and grow rich, uh, core fundamentals and principles to live by. And then this really powerful work by Byron Katie. So hope that helps Let us know what you think is a great life changing book. So we can share it with everyone else and, add it to our resource page. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome, Jen. This was good stuff. We're going to have a lot more uh, uh, conversation around uh, mindfulness and work-life balance and just having a happier and more stress-free life, you know, in the future. So those a lot of great stuff coming up with as well as some uh, some guests. Uh, you know, we, we focus a lot on the real estate end of business, but we're going to be kind of shifting that a little bit into just business in general and, and uh, lifestyle and uh, mindset. So a lot of great uh, stuff coming up um, throughout uh, the podcast and throughout all of our coaching coming up uh, in the future. You can find all the information uh, about these three books and uh, access to our resource page over at WBNLpodcast.com. This was episode 288. Our resource page is on our website. So if you go to the website, to the homepage, go to the more button in the menu and click down to resources. It'll lead you to the, the, um, the, the uh, reading list as well as some other mindful tools as well. Anything else, John O'Brien? That's it for today. All right. Well, awesome. Hey, if you're listening to this on uh, or watching this on YouTube, make sure that you haven't, or if you haven't already, like and subscribe uh, to our, our page. We really are pushing to, to, to grow our YouTube audience. So any help you can do to help us out there, or assistance you can do to help us out there would be appreciated. Um, yes. Yeah. So with all that said, um, you know, get up, get out, uh, line, connect, prosper, and be forever wandering, but not lost. All right, I got it. Let me do it again. <laughs> I, can, I don't have to say today. I, I don't. I, I don't feel I like I, I. I don't own that word. So you. Can...